Hello peepees, Daniel here again. Thanks you for, for joining me today. So what I bought today, well, what, what I sold yesterday, was my old sofa, recliner chair. It's not a sofa, it's just a reclining chair. And um, I, I've got a lot more space in my unit now, so I've decided to buy a new aquarium. My goodness, you're thinking another aquarium, Daniel? But yep, this time I'm gonna be housing a crayfish, a beautiful blue crayfish. Now I've been trying to source one for a while and I haven't, been, haven't had that much luck. I've found one that had them but they were already sold. So I was just holding them for them. But anyway, I did mine, manage to find a crayfish, a lovely blue one, and you're about to see him soon. So hang out and watch it. First of all, my fluval tank. Where is it? Um, I'm not sure where it says what, what model tank it is, but it's a 35 liter, I believe. It comes with multiple lights. Fresh water kit, there we go. Nine gallons, 34 liters. Now it doesn't weigh that much. I don't think it's real glass because it doesn't weigh very much at all. The gravel, carrying the gravel up from the grass, from the car, sorry, was a lot more intense than carrying this up from the car, that's for sure. And the gravel was like about 10 kilos, so. All right guys, well I'm gonna show you step by step how I go. Next up, we're gonna see the tank set up, all right. Hi guys! Let's have a look at my aquarium. So I've got some space for the crayfish to get out of the water. I've got it given him a little hiding space. Isn't he beautiful? He cost me like $20, which I was happy to pay. He's got a little hiding place there. Now this aquarium came with like a filter and everything, but I'm not using it. The thing is the whole back section of the aquarium is one big filter and there's no way you can pull it out. So unfortunately it doesn't have quite as much space as what he probably should. Now I was told that these guys can grow up to like bloody 10 inches, like a lobster. I don't know what on earth I'm gonna do then. So yeah, his name is Tex. I'll have to find out what type of lobster crayfish he is and write it down in the description. Look at how big his pincers are, my goodness. Beautiful. So yeah, this is where my old recliner tree used to be. Hello, Emmy. Emmy! Emmy! And this is my aquarium. I got rid of my Oscar. I've got cichlids now, as you probably know if you've been watching my channel. All right, guys, well, a little, little tank, a little lobster. I hope his back turns blue as well. He might just be stressed out because he's new to the tank. And he hasn't come out. At the aquarium, he was um, completely submersed by water the whole time. But from what I've seen on YouTube videos and whatnot, they like to get out of the water from time to time. Is this his first time out of the water? So it ended up costing me like $180 for the tank. The tank was $50 off. I think it was $120. This little fella cost me $20. It's $140. And the gravel cost me like $30. Alright guys. Okay, so this is what the aquarium looks like now. Tex is a big lobster. Isn't he beautiful? Now I had some neon tetras, which are one of the fish that you can keep with lobsters or crayfish. I got 10 of them for $20. Quite a good deal. He's hanging around. 
Now normally crayfish are nocturnal so they spend the day hidden away and come out at night. That's what I read on Google anyway. But um, this guy came from the shop where the lights are on during the day. And I'm trying to continue that pattern and leave the lights on during the day and turn them off at night. And hopefully he'll stay awake. Now he's not the... Apparently, from what I read on Google as well, they're, um, they've actually got quite good eyesight. They can see pretty well. But in my experience, it's not the case. It's almost like he's blind. Like he just goes around feeling, feeling with his little, little legs, feeling on the ground. He's got little pincers. Aside from the big ones, as you can see, he's got little pincers. And they go around, they, they feel around the bottom for anything. And look, I've got food right here for him, right in his cave. Maybe he's not hungry, but he, he's been walking around looking like he's, he needs something to eat. And he, he's not even eating it. He's, come, he's pretty much totally blind is what it seems like. Anyway, here's my fluval tank. I uh, added a, uh, a um, air supply, an air pump into the tank on low. Just because of the, the Tetras, the Neon Tetras, I don't know if they need oxygenated water or not, but I, I put it in there just in case, so... Just to move the water around a bit as well. And also for this guy, because apparently, from what I've read, the, shallower, the more shallow the water, the more oxygenated it is. So if you've got a whole lot of water, it's only getting oxygenated at the surface, and the oxygen might not necessarily be reaching the bottom. But say if you've got like, say this tank, if it were half filled, or a quarter filled, there would be more oxygen in the water. But um, I didn't like it the way it was, the way it looked when it was, wasn't completely full. It's still not completely full as you can see. I might have to top it up, I don't know. But um, yeah, so here's my fluval tank. It's great for a, a little lobster like this. I'm not sure if you can really see, but it's it's very curved. It's beautiful, and it comes with a light. It comes with a um, a filter as well. But I'm I'm not even using the filter. I threw it all away. I'm not going to use the filter. I kind of regret that because I, I probably would be using it now if I could. But I, I did throw it away. So oh well. Text. As if he's, he's got bits of orange in his... He's got bits of orange there. Beautiful. He's fun to watch as well. He gets about... Normally he's a bit more active. I don't know what he's doing now. He's just relaxing. Oh, oh what's going on? Oh. Alright guys, well thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, let me know what you think of Tex, let me know what you think of the tank, let me know if you think I'm doing the wrong thing by not giving Tex a place to, to get out of the water, because I've, I've heard mixed opinions about it, some people say, yep, that the yabbies, are, they've got to be let out of the water, they have to go out of the water every now and again, but um, I've also seen people keep them in the tank the whole time without any access to the to any land or anything so I'm not sure let me know what you guys think the shop that I bought him from he had no, nowhere to go except in the water so I'm keeping the same tradition I had yesterday when I first got him I had like a mound of gravel coming out of the water and he wasn't interested he wasn't interested he never once went out of the out of the out of under the water so anyway all right thanks guys bye bye